Okay, y'all. Um, this is kind of old news at this point, but as everyone knows, uh, HTC's fired back at Apple, and we all know what's going on there. Um, some people have made comments on the fact that HTC is you know, only firing back with five patents, but an Apple file with 20. I did find it interesting that HTC is now the fourth company to point out that Apple is infringing on others' patents and asking for borrowing of Apple products, which infringe on other people's innovations. You know, but you know, what do you expect from the company that says, good artists copy, great artists steal? It's like, for those of you who don't know, you know, back when Steve Jobs wasn't working with Apple, he openly pointed out that Apple has flagrantly stolen for years. Now that he's back as the in charge of Apple, he pretends those comments never happened. And, you know, Apple is good and Apple doesn't do anything wrong. But it's like, it's, I think the reason HTC only fired back with five patents is because they're attacking on the things that have any validity whatsoever. And that is pointing out that certain things they do, that why they have overlap, they do not infringe on Apple's patents. And if Apple wants to sue Google over Android, they need to sue Google. Rather than get into a pissing match on that, they're just going to go, doesn't have any validity whatsoever, we're not even going to fight on those grounds. Good for them, tagging the hardware. I really wish Apple would sometimes. Um, one other thing I want to touch on. Google's getting some backlash here for closing down the online store, even though they haven't done it yet, and even though it may be six, eight months before they're done. And the reason I say that is because anytime Google does something stupid, and Google does stupid stuff all the time, they're not fallible, they don't pretend to be. You go to the Google.com and you, you, you use that contact Google thing and you send Google a message. Anyone who's ever been stupid enough to do this knows Google never, ever, ever, ever responds to your message. If you're lucky, somebody will respond to your form post. But as a whole, you know, you're just SOL and getting feedback, unless you're in some kind of enterprise service or something. So as always, just to rant, I sent a message to Google on this issue. And the reason I say Google's getting overwhelming about a negative backlash on this is because much to my surprise, not only did Google respond, but they responded with an actual typed out message, not a form letter, in which you know they went on and talked about, wait, well, we're not closing the store until we have a bigger presence in the US for our official devices, and B, that presence needs to be through partners. Now, they gave a form response of like, can you be more specific about what partners are going to be? Because my big concern on that is the only partners are going to be cell phone carriers. In which case, we can expect the Google phone to devolve in something like the bat flip. I hope I'm wrong about that. I'm hoping since Best Buy is a partner for things like GTV, that Best Buy will be selling unlocked Google phones, and that that will take off in that market, because I really would like to see a Nexus 2 and a Nexus 3 and so on and so forth. And that ain't ever going to happen if Google turns the whole Nexus line over to the cell phone carriers, which is what I'm deathly afraid is going to happen. Because then we need there to be an official good Google phone that comes out every one to two years, if not more often. So that all those innovations that work their way into Android are pushed into the public's hand so that the cell phone carriers can't sit on their ass and not push these innovations forward. Because some of them are already doing that as it is. Like, if there's no incentive for them to push it through to compete, it's never going to happen. For those of you who don't know, if you have a Nexus 1, you're already running Android 2.2. You got it this weekend. It, it, it's so you don't have to wait for your carrier stuff. Given that some of the phones from carriers are still running Android 1.5 and 1.6, that's saying something. Um. So, yeah, I I, I don't know. It, it's just one of those things. It, it's, there's no pros and cons there. Um, let me point out the fact that 2.2 has this new feature about, you know, they're having 
Wi-Fi tethering, and people were like, oh, you can get tethering even with the apps they removed, because they still have the, the Wi-Fi tether app that requires your phone to be rooted. And anyone who doesn't know how to root their phone is an idiot. Why anyone would not want their phone rooted is they're just the dumbest person ever. Okay. To everyone. This is a mentality Android can do without. This has been this is one of the mentalities that until recently was very predominant in Linux. And it's a mentality we don't need to spread into the Android build of Linux. And that is Oh, well, if you're too stupid to figure out how it works, then you're too stupid to use it. I'm not going to help you. Do I know how to root my phone? Yes. Have I played around with rooting my phone? Yes. Do I think I should have to root my phone to do anything that doesn't need root privileges? No. <laughs> There's a simple phrase in Linux, and I want all of y'all to learn it. Thou shall not take the name of root in vain. It's a good rule of thumb. Because when you're logged in as root user, you have root access and you have root permissions. If somebody takes control of my system while I'm in root user, they can screw with everything on my system. I should only need to be logged in as a root user when I'm doing root things, like changing core system settings, modifying API and firmware controls, and doing full OS flashing. With the exception of core things like that, I shouldn't need to be a root user. Are there advantages to having root access? Yes. As a matter of fact, I think all Android phones should come rooted and you should have the ability to log in or reboot into root for doing root tasks. But I should only be rooted when doing root tasks. When I root an Android phone, I'm the root user. And I'm the root user in at all times. This causes real problems and real security risks. One of the new features coming with Android is the ability to do intention pushes or requests where I can just push something to the phone and it will just do stuff. This is great if I'm logged in as a regular old-fashioned user because then I'm limited to the extent of you know, launching Google Maps or instant launching a related app or instant launching other things like that. That's a fairly useful purpose of this API and I'm glad it's been added and I'm glad these types of things will be happening with Android now. However, Let's say I'm a rooted user, and somebody makes a push, or a, a, a uh, what do they call it? Uh, I wrote it down. Uh, whatever it is. That's not. Except I'm rooted, which means they can also make requests to screw with other stuff. And back doors, yada yada and so forth. Basically, you should never be logged in as root on a Linux system unless you're doing root things. This is my problem with the fact that you have to root your phone to do other things. I'm glad Google made this part of science. I just don't like the fact that the apps have been removed. It sets a bad precedent. And it potentially has some issues going down the road. Um, I know why they did it, but it's just it's one of those things it makes you think. I mean, I could easily sit here for an hour and talk about the pros and cons of rooting. I'm just not going to. Um, oh, yeah, the intent API is what I was thinking of. Sorry. So, that's not. 